Hello, my name's Tom and in this video I'm going to be showing off the free open source Neuralamp modeler which was developed by Steve Atkinson. So it's basically like a software version of a Kemper so you can use it to make captures or profiles or whatever you want to call them of amplifiers, guitar amplifiers and you can also include the overdrives on it. So you can't capture things like uh, modulation or chorus or reverb yet. And you do have to use your own impulse responses, but that's probably a better option anyway. So if you're watching this, you might be thinking, well, that sounds very similar to Tonex, which is a product which has recently come out um, by IK Multimedia. So I did try this just last week and although it's obviously looks a lot more impressive and you've got nice graphics and everything i was somewhat underwhelmed with the quality of the actual models included within it so and on, this is just a free version in the free version you can't actually create your own captures yourself either you're just using ones they've done and the actual impulse responses for the speakers are baked into it so if you have the latest version of the full amplitude you can turn off the, sp the speakers in that and put your own ones in which you kind of need to do with your amplitude software to get good sounds but um I, the actual amp sounds i could get using um the free neural amp software i think were uh, far superior and this works surprisingly well as well you, you'll probably be the freeware which is still in development he's still regularly adding new things to it, uh, making new changes, fixing bugs. So it's an ongoing process, but it's surprisingly good. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'll give you a, a quick demo to start with, just comparing some ones I tried. And then I'll show you um, how you can download the stuff and um, get download some of the captures yourself, give it a go yourself. And then if you're interested, I'll also give you a bit of an introduction as to how you can go around making your own amps, your own amp models from this. Okay, so what I'll do to start with, this is just what it looks like on the other one, is to start with, I'll just play you a bit, which is coming out um, from Engelamp. It's like a rack one. Um, I've just got a noise gate on it initially coming out. And then I'm uh, just using uh, Engel V30 um, IR on one side and the free Marshall one from Firewires on the other, which go quite well together. So I'm using the same on both. Okay, so I'll just play this for you. So this is this is the real angle. It's an E530 and 840 amp combined. And then I um, did a copy of this, made a snapshot of this, and then I'll, I'll play it to you using the neural amp modeler. So you can just hear the difference. Okay, so it's obviously just um, very raw track. There's nothing done to it, no EQ, nothing like that. It's, but that's kind of the point of that's what you're taking to start with. So on this one, this is the generated one. What I am using, this is a neural amp modeler here. You just load it up here. It's using the same um, IRs. And what I have done is when you do the capture, if you use a noise gate on it, that interferes with the capture. What I found it did for me anyway. So um, if you, it's quite noisy without it. So I just put um, free Nalex noise katana, which is good for just using VSTs. This is fine for VSTs. And I use that. So I use that on it. So I'll play you this. So this is the capture. <laughs> I 
Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll do a lead one. So obviously, if I was recording this properly, I would be doing EQ and I'll be doing other stuff to it and I'll be calling, at least double tracking it, putting it either side or usually quad tracking it so it'll sound a lot fuller. But I wanted to just show what it sounds like, basically the raw track, so you, you get an idea of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, a lead one. So on this, on both of them, I'm using um, sound toys. This is um, this is just a preset I did myself. Um, you can download this from uh, witchpig.co.uk. If you go there, I've got a whole load of free um, VSTs and uh, digital instruments and presets and stuff. So this will be in the pack for the sound toys effects rack. Um, same IRs again. Okay, so I'll. I'll I'll play I'll I'll play this. So this is for actual real angle lead and then I'll compare it to the the modeled one. Okay, and then now, this is the modelled one. Okay, so you can hear they're slightly different because when I um, do the other one, I had to put it into. I found that I to do it. What I did was I used my axe effects, and because I only have a single um, a focus right solo interface, so if you want to do the reamping through it, what you need to you really need to have um, extra ins and outs. But in my uh, fractal axe effects. What I have got is, I'll show you here, look at this one here, so I'll just put this on to show you. So on here, I've got a, a video showing easy reamping from model, modelers to real amps. So what I could do was I could um, use the Axe Effects interface to, bring, to um, actually send the source signal which you need to send um, through the amp and then record it and then you upload those to create the models. Um, so, but when I did it from the amp recording back in and tried to reamp it, that was that was too noisy. So I ended up just putting it directly from the load box from the amp into the Focusrite solo. So there's a bit of difference in sound like that. But I also did um, some captures using just the Axe FX models itself. Um, so they're both going through the Fractal Axe FX interface and they sounded remarkably similar. So if you want to try any of those, I'll put a link in um, the video description and you can download those. So what you need to do if you want to try them out is um, you need to download the actual VST and then if you go to, there's an actual site here which is a Facebook group called Neural Amp Modeler Discussion and people post the models that they've created up on there so you can download them on there and you can get the basic information on there and I'll put the link to download the VST and then you can just bring them down and do it. Um, it's probably worth, like I said, using uh, you can also, I'll put a link to this as well, which is just a noise katana, because this gets rid of the noises and this works well if you're just using it as a VST. So if you include this, so there's quite a few people have put up some, you know, some good um, amp models there, which you can all try out for free. And it seems to be ever growing. So at the moment on that group up there, there's only, it's only recently went through a hundred members. So it's still not that well known, but I expect it will come, it will become a lot better known soon. So if you want to have a go at actually making the models yourself, the best place to start 
is there's a, a very good video put up um, how to use NAM Neural Amp Modeler Easy Mode by Jason Zadora. And he goes through all the steps you need to do and the things you need to remember. And what do you, so what you just do, just to give you an, a rough idea, is you have to go to this page here. You have to download the capture signal. You reamp the capture signal through your amp. Then you upload both that. You post them up to here. You, you upload both the WAV file and the um, and, and what you've generated from your amp. And then you can build and then you um, run it on here. You go through the different steps on here. Do this one and then you train it. And this takes about 10 minutes for the most basic ones. And then you can download um, the two files from there. So hang on, if I have a look, I'll show you. So what you get, I've got some other ones up there, is you just get a config file and a weights file. And then you open those up. You just open up the folder. So if you wanted to open up the rocker verb one you, I did, you just click on that in the um, neural amp modeler here and then um, it will op it will open it up and it'll work so yeah there's a few things to look out for um one of the things i did was i thought well why do you need to put up the um the initial wave file which would be is it like this again but when you put it through your door it seems to slightly change the size of it. So, um, so you need to actually export it again and do it at the same time as the file you've actually created. So here's like the file I created. Um, you also need to make sure that they match exactly in, in, in the same length. So when you go over, you need to cut it off there. And then when you export it, when you render it out, you need to do it at 4,800, not the default 4,400. You need to set it to mono and do it to web file, and you need to call in the same things. So you need to be consistent in the naming. The other thing I found, well, if you haven't got, um, if you haven't got any way, if you haven't got a, a, an interface with, uh, multiple ins and outs and you don't have um, a load box to use with a real amp to do it then what you can do is you can also just for experiment is you can try doing it with um, just a VST and you can just basically copy a VST of an amp model um, so I did that to start with so that's the first thing I tried doing but the um, one thing I did find which is just to watch out for in Reaper specifically is that what you need to do is you need to get these bits here matching because that sets it up that aligns it to start with and sometimes in reaper there's a bit of a problem where when you render a file which has got effects associated to it, it those don't kick in straight away so if you're doing the render the thing to get around that is to actually change here so it gives it time to catch up so you actually change it so that it's um, uh, offline render and then it gives it time to kick up. But when you um, do it with a VST, what you want to do is after you've recorded it, after you've recorded it, is you want to um, render it out. If you freeze render tracks, so you need to do it as mono. If it's not showing the two dots here, then um, what I did was I just copied a section here, put it in front. So it didn't work for the first one, but then it that kind of triggered it. So it kicked in and then worked for the, then, then it fired off for the actual signal for the second time. So you might need to sort of, if you're doing a VST and you're doing it in Reaper and you're rending it out, you might need to, to do that just to make sure it kicks off these at the beginning. The other thing I found which stopped it working properly is if you're using a noise gate. So um, if you're using a real amp and you're using over, lots of overdrive and you've got an overdrive in pedal, you're going to get a certain amount of buzz. And normally when you're recording it, you put a noise gate in it. 
if you use the noise gate, that just messed it up. So you basically have to record it noisy, but it does seem to deal with that noise and cancel it out the whole modeling process. So you don't need to worry about it. And then um, you're going to have a bit of noise on it at the end, like you would do with any real amp. Um, but then you can just use this free Nalex noise katana. So I'll put that in there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that should be enough just to get you up and going, really. So I'd check out Steve's one there. Those were a few things to keep having a look. So um, it's definitely worth giving it a go, trying it out. If you do get stuck, have any problems, try going on the Neural Amp. Um, go, go, go on to the Neural Amp Modeler discussion because there's lots of people trying things out, having similar problems. And um, yeah, maybe let me know in the comments how you get on. OK, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to try out any other free software stuff, um, any free VSTs, instruments, presets, um, you can go to my uh, witchpig.co.uk page. And if you're interested in other sort of music technology stuff and me trying out different things, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, OK, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.